This time we're talking about the National Professional Standards for Teachers and we're looking at Standard 1, Know the Students and How They Learn. The ATSL website, which is atsil.edu.au, is one thing you can always go to and looking at the Australian Professional Standards for Teachers and their elaborations and examples. But for today, looking at Standard 1. So Standard 1.1 is the physical, social, intellectual development and the characteristic of students, which is a basic long way of saying understand how the students learn. Now, once upon a time, students would learn by walking to a class and sitting and listening to you. Now, they use all different tools and technologies. So here, we're demonstrating what tools can you use to engage them in the social environment, intellectual development, and so on. And this, this student has given an example of, uh, they've identified the standard. They've given some examples such as um, Edmodo or Facebook or, or the, these platforms can use to use the student's social development. And then they've given an example of uh, how the students can use Edmodo to talk in, in, in a classroom environment. It helps the students to feel engaged. This student, I would have suggested, didn't really can cover the third part, which is giving an example of how they'd use it specifically in their classroom, but it's, it's still not too bad. Next one is understand how students learn. So very simple, um, they're talking about how looking at this general pedagogy and how we apply it to teaching strategies. So students learn different tools. So one example is Scoodle. So again, an ICT using digital activities and Scoodle is the example, which we haven't covered yet. Um, and here we're talking about, uh, so soon we're talking about Gap Minor, which we covered this week. So this is this is a good result. Uh, it gives the ICT, uh, the that's all standard, the ICT and pedagogy and with a specific example. Standard 1.3 is students with diverse linguistics, cultural, religious, and socioeconomic backgrounds. So you're basically you're saying students are coming from many different things. So how do you deal with that? Uh, so they've identified that you need to be um, catering to the needs of different backgrounds. You can look at the ACARA guidelines, the Scooter website, and think about the different demographics. And here we've got this person talking about biology class, plug in a laptop, bring up Scoodle, and work through the different stuff. I would have said, uh, and making sure that you're not alienating students. Um, because you're using the vocabulary that is common to all students. You may wish to go into more detail, and remember we're talking about individual students here, not entire cultures or religions. Uh, so if you have to realise that students are all different. 1.4, this is one of the uh, most difficult ones for students to do because you're looking at how you're dealing with teaching Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander students. And with this time we're talking about specific students. So how do you cater for students who are of Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander descent? Um, so you need to take into account their cultural heritage, the special events, the transitions, and how do you lose track? Um, for one thing, students have um, a sorry time. If someone dies in their community, um, they have a two weeks, uh, two weeks of sorry time where they're going away, they're reflecting upon that person. Uh, and, and how their life's been changed for them. So if they're away from school for two weeks, how do you stay in touch? How do you keep them going? How do you make sure they haven't missed out on stuff? And here the talk, this person has given some examples. They've given a, a link. They're also talking about um, different programs you can do. And here we're saying that if students are away, you can keep them up to date using an online learning platform or a communication um, via email, text, messages, or just send them the content. So a good result. 1.5 is differentiation. So we'll, how do you meet the needs of many different students? Um, here we've identified that you need to cater for all these different needs, um, planning a lesson to looking at the students that are in your group, uh, incorporating interactive whiteboard activities in each lesson so you have some chance to move away from reading, writing, and in, instead through um, understanding stuff through touch and kinesthetics. Um, here's an example of the website they've included and looking at different activities from primary through the senior school level. So differentiation, as we've pointed out before, is really important if you can differentiate across the students um, and identify the best methods for students to learn. Uh, 1.6, this is one that some people quite often stuff up. Uh, strategies to support full participation of students with disabilities. Now keep in mind, disabilities is not just students who are in wheelchairs or students that have hurt themselves or broken a foot or something. This also includes dyslexia, Asperger's, um, um, depression, or many different things that we have in, in classes today. Uh, now, the, this one has identified that in the, uh, in the first one. And here they're talking about, you know, students in wheelchair, people with problems in the eyes, and they're coming up with different ideas of how to use ICT to cater to all these different things. Now, for example, if a student struggles to read, if you give them a copy of the material electronically, they can just make it bigger. Make the font size 20 point instead of 10 point. Um, some students are colorblind, so if they can choose to change the colors, well, that's helpful. 
uh, some students uh, uh, have trouble reading or staying on task, but they can turn the text into uh, a voice service so that way they can hear it. Uh, yeah. Um, in this case, you've got um, using Edmodo. So students battling with dyslexia can benefit from worksheets, colored paper, many different things. Also, you can te um, test and assess orally rather than through um, text um, submissions. So if you have a student who is struggling with dyslexia and you, you want to assess their knowledge and understanding, not necessarily their presentation and writing ability, then you may wish to get them to present orally. So you need to work out ways in which you can achieve that. It may be that you get them to do something as a podcast. I know that I've done this with my students in science where they record the, they record their science experiment, they uh, put it all together into a podcast and present it. Or they may just hand it, bring up all the photos they've taken during the lesson and during the practical and then talk me through it so rather than doing the complete write-up. So that's standard one. Good luck with that. We'll move on to the next standard.